Hey guys, welcome back to Fly Time for Beginner series. This is episode three and we're gonna be covering one of my favorite patterns, a cruncher. This is a specific pattern that's quite easy to do for beginners, but it's really effective. Let's get right into it. Hello and welcome to Vice Fly's YouTube channel. This is where we're going to be doing the episode 3 of the Fly Time for Beginners series. Um, this is going to be a small, now this is a slightly different variation, a cruncher with a uh, simple peacock kettle body and an orange dub thorax with a silver rib and a, mar a mylar rib as well. Now this simple cr cruncher pattern, this is on a size 12 B175 but we're going to be using a size 10 B175. You can tie it on a, a range of range of sizes and uh, it's a really extremely effective pattern. Uh, crunchers are a, a great fly all year round for both brown trout and rainbow trout and uh, it's extremely effective. So what you're going to need for this video is a 8 uni unithread in fire orange or you can actually use a thread of any colour, whatever you've got to hand or whatever suits you. And you're going to need obviously your some sort, some sort of tinsel, so I'm using a Pearl UV tinsel um, and then a securing rib which I'm going to be using a silver fine wire rib, it's important to have a fine wire for such a small fly and a delicate fly and uh, then you'll need varnish and some sort of hackle, so I'm going to be using a soft uh, game hackle that has a, a black centre and a, now this is just a grade B hackle so it's not terribly good so you don't really need um, expensive hackles, that's why I wanted to use a hackle that is it's quite open to, to a lot of beginners. This is just a simple beginner's hackle and you're going to be using these small feathers at the front of the hackle here. The, the reason for that is that these are actually the feathers that are, that are small enough to be used as your front your front hackle, the wing cover, which is the, the hackle at the very front of the head there. And that's important because uh, you need to have small fibres, whereas these larger feathers at the back of the cape, like this, I'll just get a feather off to show you. This is far too big to actually be used as the front hackle. You want to have something that's going to span the body but not be totally engulfing it, unlike that, which should be more for a wet fly. So, any sort of hackle that you've got linen in, you can use black or ginger. Ginger is a really common one. That will also be used for the tail and I'll show you how to be able to, to pull off tail fibres later on. I'm going to be using peacock kettle, just standard peacock kettle for the body and a, an orange ice dub as the thorax. Now that's important, you should have a hot spot on a cruncher, it's really common to have hot spots. Um, I, I really like an ice dub because it actually gives it a bit of sparkle so on sunny days you can see twinkle through the water and uh, it really attracts a lot more fish. And then for the cheeks, I'll be using sunburst goose bites. Just standard sunburst goose bites. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a layer of the fire orange. The reason we use such a bright thread is we can actually create a nice hot head at the end of the fly and you don't actually see any of that. So you're just gonna come down to right about the hook point just there. Just tear that off. Uh, and we're gonna go straight in with the, the tail. So to pull off tail, tail fibres, all I'm going to do is strip back fibres on a feather like this. Now it's quite difficult. When I was beginning, I, one, of the, one of the common difficulties that a lot of people have is actually getting a tail to line up. So what you want to do is get your fibres and try and pull them so that they're all kind of aligning like so. And then bunch them at the top like this. And then just pull. And that will keep them all aligned. Now make sure to pinch them tight so that they don't move or ruffle in your hands and then just transfer them over so that you're going to be able to have them sitting the way that you want just like so and if you think that they're not lined up perfectly you can kind of ruffle them in your hands to make them line up just like that and the tail should be the same length as the shaft so you want to just sit that back on where you want and just come over and catch that with one one bit of thread there, so you've got that set. And if you don't like it, you can come, come off and then retie down. So I'm just going to leave that like that. Then we're going to tie in our body material. So we're going to start off with the one that goes over last, and the last one is going to be our rib. So first thing we'll tie in is the, the silver rib. 
just two turns to lock that in. Then we're going to tie in the UV tinsel. Again, just a couple of turns, just get that sitting along the body and tie it in two turns. And then we're going to tie in, ordinarily I would use two peacock kettles, but this is actually quite a thick kettle that I'm using. So I am just going to tie in one and that will save us body, body proportion. I'm just going to tie it in as one from the stem and then just wind all those down, try to keep them on top of the fly. Wind all those down neatly until you get to roughly the end. You want to have the body run up until about three quarters of the way up the hook um, from, the, from the point and then leave space for your for your dubbing. So first of all we'll bring over this herald and touch and turn. You want to completely completely cover the body in herald because we're going to have this poking through past the rib but this will give us our main body effect. Be quite gentle with the herald because they can, they're very prone to snapping and come past where you're going to have your point of your thorax so that you can have complete coverage. And then just come back a couple of turns to lock that in place. You want to come over the top of the herald with your thread when you're locking it in and that will actually secure the herald a little bit more. Then you're going to take your UV and just squash down with quite open turns. Come up past there. And again, secure that in. Cut away the excess. Then we're going to come over where we've where we've ribbed with the UV over the top of that with the silver. Now not only is this going to secure the UV in place, but it gives it a sort of shine to the silver. The silver actually emboldens it, makes it stand out a little bit more, which is good for, like I say, having a nice ribbed ribbed effect. And just wiggle, wiggle this, wiggle this, uh, the, the wire away. Sorry, and that'll actually build up enough heat to just cut that wire, so you don't have to cut it yourself. So now we're going to come back one turn, and then in line with where we want our thorax to be. Quite happy with that body, so we're going to have our our ice dub in here. Now with dubbing, it can get quite complicated. So all you're going to want to do, especially with this synthetic dubbing, there's not really too much of the appliance technique onto the thread that needs to be done. So we're just going to tear away a small proportion, I'd say around about a fingerful as I like to call it, which is just resting it on your finger about that much. And now take it to the thread and you're just going to slowly turn, trying to keep it tapered so that we've got a, a larger proportion towards the back end than we do the front. And get any of those small tufts and just bring them up and we can we can actually make this look a bit that's not caught quite there so just make it tight towards the head now that's nice and furled I'm gonna come one in front of that now if you don't like it you can come back and take a little bit off. I'm going to make that a little bit tighter because I didn't like how how far out it was. There we go. Now that's a little bit tighter, so I've only got a couple of a couple of threads coming back, and I can can cut them. But just leave that how you, however you want. Just now, you want to make sure it's tight enough so that you can manipulate it later. Now we're going to put in our hackle. So when you're selecting a hackle off of the feather, you want to try and get one that you know is going to be secure enough. For when you have a high grade hackle you don't need to worry about that because most of the feathers will be good enough to use but for these lower grade hackles you want to try and choose one that's got the same length of fibres throughout and one that you know that you can use and it will be secure and it won't snap so if you're using a poor grade hackle and you have fibres like this that have small chunks out of them from processing or manufacturing or whatever when, they, when they've been packaged you don't want to use a feather like this because you will get a poorer quality fly and it's more likely to snap so when we're coming in with a hackle you just want to pull away some of the fibres from being able to apply so just hold this like that 
and then you'll just select where you want. So I'm going to want a little bit of the black and a little bit of the brown. So just pull back like that softly until you start pulling away the fibres and then we can tie this in. Just bring that in like so, one, one loose turn over the top. Just tighten that down and bring it back to, you want it to be able to sit over the back. I've just got one fibre there so I'm just going to pull that back. You want to be able to sit over the hot spot and not cause too much trouble to the head of your fly because you want we're going to have to put goose bites in in a second and uh, to be able to do that we need to have this completely out of the way so just sweep all those fibers back to one side now it has slightly moved there so i'm just going to take take this back and move the hackle back down again don't be afraid to make mistakes when you are Maneuvering hackles especially, it can be quite tricky, so you want to make sure that every fly is perfect. Just hold that in place where you want it to be, and then come over the top with that. Now just pull that hackle over. Now I am doing this with my fingers as everyone doesn't have hackle pliers but if you do have hackle pliers please use them as it is a lot easier. And then just doing two turns, one in front of the other. A lot of people like to do one turn but for this particular pattern I think I quite like to get that, that brown and black effect on the hackle in front of the fly. Just make sure you keep the other one in front and then grab the tip. Grab the tip of the hackle, come forward with your thread and that's that locked in place. So now you can begin to, to actually make the fly look a bit more presentable. Once you've locked that in with two, three or four turns, you can just simply quickly tear that away and since that if you feel like you're not confident in tearing this base, like I am at just now, I feel like that's slightly too attached, just come in really close with your scissors and just pull forward. That'll snip that off. Now just sweep everything back. After we sweep everything back, we can actually be much more tidy in making this head area. Now we can actually go in with our goose bites and get a nice cheek. So we're just going to cut them off the stem and we're going to use the fine side just like so. Now one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut, cut the, the finest side off. I like it to be a bit more, a bit more bright in colour. So you'll see that I've cut off the tip there and I do want it to just sit alongside the hackle like so. Turn it around, I'm happy with that. And the same again on the other side. Make sure that you're cutting the same way so they both match and just pop that in match into the other side start off with a one loose turn and then a couple of tight turns and what that will actually do is it starts to crack the goose by it and now we can simply just tear these off why for, for beginners I quite recommend the use of goose bites in the head as they are really easy to use and they give a really good effect. Not only are they cheaper than jungle cock but they're easier to use to start off with and then you can get your confidence up and then begin to want to, want to use more expensive ingredients like jungle cock. And then just tie off your head
Now we're just going to drop a spot of varnish onto the fly. Just with a light like using needle, this is much more precise. Now if you think that you get any varnish in the iron hook, what you can do um, is just simply clean it out with either a piece of peacock hair oil or any hackle and just pull that through and that will clear the eye. And that is your simple crunch and pattern. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content. We'd love to hear from you so please leave us a comment telling us what you think and what patterns you'd like to see. See you in the next video.